people need portfolios, your resume, how you build your reputation online, your brand, gives people a uh, reason to hire you. And when you're doing it yourself, it's cheaper, but you get what you pay for. So your portfolio is not supposed to be salesy, but it is a site that's really all about you and promoting you. Your name is your brand and your reputation totally precedes you. Chat about what you can do and customize your portfolio as much as you can to really showcase who you are and what you do. Make sure that it shows your personal style and be practical, unique, and your subtext really should quickly tell people exactly what you do and how you do it. Every portfolio needs to display just a few basic pieces of content to really showcase your work and help people get to know just about everything about you and the decisions um, that you make in the process of them being your client. A few things that really, really need to be in your portfolio. Big, high quality images. Also link to the live version, but especially if you're a developer, keep a copy of the original just so that people can click and see it. And it, this is absolutely essential because when people go to check out your portfolio, you wanna make sure that the site looks clean and up to web standards. And once you hand over that stuff to a client, you have no idea or say in what they do with it, so they can break it along the way. Testimonials are a great way for you to show visitors your clients really love you, that you're personable, and that they enjoyed the experience with you in their own words. And it's it's okay to clean up their grammar, but try to keep everything just about the same. And if you do edit their grammar or anything, be sure to show uh, the person what you did with it before putting it live on your site. Now, you don't have to use every single piece of um, stuff that you make in your portfolio, but make sure that you have good pieces and uh, try to have at least five different ones that really show off your ability, diversify style and anything, just to make sure that it's complete and beautifully finished project, that um, if you offer more than one service, don't make people guess what you do. List them off, be clear and concise, not everyone understands geek lingo, so be sure that uh, you're really descriptive and you might even want to have another page that kind of describes those things. It'll be good for your SEO and kind of explain to people exactly what web design means to you. Case studies, they give your potential employers and clients the opportunity to really access and it, it's really the entire heart of your portfolio. Make sure that you have good case studies. The about page is your opportunity to really shine, tell people who you are, what you do, where you came from, it's your story, it's your experience, it's all summed up into one beautiful little package. If you know a good photographer, try to get a professional photo done and just add it to this page so that people can really see your face. This comes off handy when you're in meetings with new client meeting and you're at a coffee shop and neither of you have ever met before. At least one of you should be able to recognize the other. If you have awards or you're involved in organizations, you volunteer, show that stuff off. Nobody is going to know it unless you tell them. Contact pages. Again, this is another essential, essential piece of your website. Don't make it too hard for people to contact you. I know a lot of people are afraid of stalkers, but if you make it impossible for people to contact, it's hard. They're eventually going to give up and just run away. So don't hide it in your footer. Don't hide it at all. Put it out there. What you should include is a phone number or a Skype number, Google Voice number, a way to contact you via phone. Tungle, if you have it, it's an awesome tool. If you don't have it, check it out. Add to your social networks. Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn are kind of the top one. Add an email address or contact form. You can do this with Google Documents if, if you're not a programmer. This will give you an opportunity to set up the contact form and give people ways of contacting you. Now, contact forms can have just about whatever you want in them, but I'll give you a few recommendations just in case you don't really know what to do yet. If you're not saving this information already, if you're a Mac user, use Address Book. If you're not, there's other online options. I mean, you can save them in your, your Gmail, or you can use something like High Rise to really be able to categorize all the people that you know. Here's the fields. A name field, uh, phone number, email, address, Twitter, website. Um, I would also add a drop-down menu of why those people are contacting you, how they found you. This is really um, interesting because then you know really how to pr continue promoting yourself. I would also use, especially if you are somebody who has multiple services that they offer, use checkboxes so that people can show you all the things that they're interested in because maybe they're interested in web design but maybe you offer hosting too. This will give them the option to show you both. Ask how they want to be connected um, and when they want to be connected. What's the best way to reach them? Don't just add people to your newsletter. This is so spammy. Give them the option, and if you do have one, absolutely add this to your contact form because people probably want to get connected with you. Another great thing to add onto your portfolio is blogging. 
adding a blog to your portfolio can be a great way to really show off your recent work that you don't want to add to your, your actual case study area. You do an opportunity to tell people exactly who you are and teach them about your area of expertise. It can kind of work like a frequently asked questions area. Show up higher in the search engines and give you more and more opportunity to be found online and give, let people who are searching for you find you. Don't make people leave comments, but do let them. Uh, allow that feature for comments and feedbacks. Don't make it hard for people to leave comments by using anti-spam CAPTCHA software. If you want to prevent spam, I would recommend Discus, and you can use that on WordPress. Use a niche. Um, then stick with it. Whatever you do, you may have a broad list of services, that's fine, but whatever you do, don't sway from your focus. If you are a web designer, hosting, whatever, talk about those things, that's fine. You can talk about multiple things, but if you're that, don't jump over to a fashion blog. If you want to do both, have two separate blogs. There's interesting headers, photos, links, but don't infringe on other people's copyright. If you want to use photos, there's plenty of options in Creative Commons. If you need to find that kind of stuff, go on a Flickr. Every site should have a call to action. Stand out with color or video um, and buttons. Help lead people where you want them to go. More than likely, you want them to contact you or give you the information so you can contact them. So use images, buttons, videos again to come accomplish your mission. Just remember, every page has a next step. Uh, follow me on Twitter, hire me, request an estimate, view my portfolio, follow me online, call me. These are all totally call to action. If you uh, don't have any client work yet, there are a few things that you can do to have some samples on your site. Now, those things can be, uh, you can create a WordPress theme and give it away or sell it, design a few free Twitter backgrounds, design an icon set, developer API. I know these are mostly for designers, but hey, I am the designer. Some logos for yourself. Or get an internship somewhere, even if it's unpaid at first, just to get the samples. Take a workshop or class, volunteer to do a site or work for a nonprofit or charity, or just do some work for a friend or family member at low or no cost. If you want to do it yourself, again, DIY if you ever want to Google it, check out sites like Smashing Magazine or Go Media. They are great for inspiration. Also, read blogs like Chris Brogan and Seth Godin. Nate Riggs makes you user-friendly. If you don't know what that means, you can always um, just remember to keep it simple. Less is more. If all else fails, just Google UX design. That basically stands for usability design or user experience design. Don't put too much information on one page or you will overwhelm people and then you'll get nowhere. One call to action per page and white space is your friend. Don't try to be a little fancy pants designer either when it comes to navigation. It's make things complicated though and nobody's going to be able to get through your site. Just hurting yourself. Be consistent. Approach your own project like you would a client. Have goals. The shoemaker's children should have shoes. You can host your portfolio without having to know too much to build your own site if you're not a graphic designer slash developer, which most people are one or the other. Tumblr, Postress, WordPress. WordPress, you can get plenty of free themes just by Googling free themes, or you can buy them, whatever. DeviantArt, Behance, CPLUV, Flickr, uh, Coro, uh, I don't know how to say that, Coro, whatever. It's C O R O. FLOT portfolios. And when you are all done with all of what I've just said, promote yourself. And there's plenty of ways to do that. Join a few professional affiliations. Uh, some examples are AIGA, that's just uh, for graphic designers. AMA is the American Marketing Association. MEMA is the Minnesota Interactive Marketing Association. That's if you're in Minnesota. Um, go to South by Southwest, um, SX. City Commerce, volunteer, joining a few communities on places like LinkedIn, answering people's questions. People will appreciate it. You might even make a few friends, and I bet people will also start going to your blog. Forget connect your blog to Facebook so that people on there can read it, because that's the fastest way to start getting readers. Commit yourself and your designs to online gallery sites and uh, directories like Merchant Circle and Demos, like Chris Brogan's Third Tribe Twitter. I look forward to reading all of your comments or seeing your video responses on YouTube. Don't forget, uh, subscribe to my blog. It's DesireeVite.com, D-E-S-A-R-A-E, V-E-I-T. I'm Desiree V just about everywhere but YouTube, D-E-S-A-R-A-E-V. Until next time, I'm Desiree V. See you guys. Just remember, less is more.